Welcome to the Learn the Word podcast, where you will be challenged to grow in your knowledge of the Word of God and your relationship to the God of the Word, where we will discuss issues of Bible interpretation as well as matters of practical application. My name is Paul Weaver, and I have the privilege of serving as the Academic Dean of the Word of Life Global Bible Institute. Our main campus is here in Scroon Lake, New York, and we have 10 additional accredited teaching sites around the world. To learn more about the Word of Life Bible Institute, visit us at wordoflife.edu. That's wordoflife.edu. Well, I hope that you have had a wonderful beginning of the first week of the 2021 new year. And I trust that you're excited about how God is going to use you for His glory in this new year. In last week's podcast, we were reminded that failure is not final and that we serve a God of second chances. John Mark was a perfect example of such. And I trust that you are determined this coming year to institute godly habits, to love the things that God loves, and to hate the things that God hates. That brings us to today's podcast. Today, we're going to talk about the Demas disease. The subtitle of this podcast is The Love That God Hates. Listeners, do you have the Demas disease? Maybe you have it and you don't even know it. There are millions of people in this world who have this disease and have no earthly idea that they have it. Unfortunately, this disease is extremely contagious. It spreads far easier than the coronavirus. Furthermore, masks, hand washing, hand sanitizer, and social distancing will not deter the spread of this deadly disease. And this disease is killing millions more than COVID. It is extremely deadly and extremely dangerous. So please allow me to warn you. May, may I even beg you, be very, very careful that you do not get the Demas disease because this disease has eternal implications. It goes beyond this life and into the next. Well, I imagine by now most of you have figured out that what I am calling the Demas disease has to do with a character found in the New Testament by the name of Demas. And this disease is named after him because he had the disease, and it was fatal. On today's program, we're going to examine the life of Demas. Demas is not a well-known figure in the Bible. Maybe you have never heard his name, or vaguely recall it if you have. In fact, there are only three verses in the entire Bible that speak of him. But what we do learn about Demas is tragic and is a serious warning and reminder to present-day Christians. As we examine these three verses in the Bible that mention Demas by name, we'll be able to define the Demas disease. The next, we'll be able to describe the Demas disease. And finally, we'll speak about the devastation of the Demas disease. So if you have a copy of the scriptures nearby, whether that be in pixel or paper, would you take it and turn with me to the book of Philemon. Paul writes this epistle to Philemon from prison in Rome, Paul's first Roman imprisonment when he was under house arrest. There's only one chapter in this book, the book of Philemon, and the verses that we will read are verses number 23 and 24. They're at the very end of the chapter. This is located in the conclusion of Paul's epistle to Philemon. Paul has already concluded that he wanted to com- what he wanted to communicate to Philemon about Onesimus, and now he's ending the letter with some pleasantries. That is where we read now. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends you greetings, and so do Mark, Aristocrus, Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers. Well, what do we learn about Demas from this simple conclusion to Paul's epistle to Philemon. Well, we learn that Demas is with Paul, the apostle, in Rome, and that he is a co-laborer with the apostle. That's pretty substantial. He is a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ who is sacrificing significantly to partner with the apostle Paul in the preaching of the gospel. Unlike John Mark, whom we discussed in last week's podcast, our first impression of Demas is a great one. It's impressive. Okay, so let's look at the second occasion where Demas is mentioned in Scripture. Demas is mentioned in another one of Paul's epistles, specifically Colossians. 
The book of Colossians was written to, uh, to the church in Colossae. It was written by Paul. It was lo- uh, the church in Colossae was located in Asia Minor, present-day Turkey. And Paul writes this epistle also while under house arrest in Rome. In chapter 4, verse 14, Paul writes, Our dear friend Luke, the doctor, and Demas send greetings. Like the reference in Philemon, this verse also is found in the conclusion of Paul's epistle. It too is simply saying that Demas sends his greetings to the believers in Colossae. This verse reaffirms what we learned in the letter to Philemon, that Demas was a co-worker of Paul's in the gospel ministry. Our second impression of Demas is also an impressive one. Demas is an example to follow. At this point in our study, we should strive to follow Demas' example as one devoting himself to the proclamation of the gospel and ministering to the saints. But before we get too excited about naming our firstborn child Demas and esteeming him as an example to follow, let's take a look at our third and last instance where Demas's name is mentioned. But before we get too excited about naming our firstborn Demas and esteeming him as an example to follow, let's take a look at our third and last instance in Scripture where Demas is named. You see, Demas had a remarkable first impression. He had an impeccable second impression. But it is his last impression that is his lasting impression. And unlike John Mark, whom we studied last week, Demas's last impression is horrible and tragic. Turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. It is in this passage of Scripture that we find the definition of the Demas disease. But first, let me quickly give you the historical context. 2 Timothy was the last letter that we have written by Paul the Apostle. It is his last inspired letter which was preserved by God for us to have today. When Paul wrote it, he was in his second Roman imprisonment, which was very different from his first. You remember that in Paul's first Roman imprisonment, he was under house arrest. Paul had relative freedom. People could come to see him. He was able to continue to teach and preach as long as people came to him. He was in a home not in a prison, not in a prison cell, I should say. In Paul's first Roman imprisonment, Paul expected to be released, and in fact, he was. He continued to preach the gospel and make missionary journeys for several more years before being captured and imprisoned again. The second imprisonment, though, was in a cold cell. This time, he was not optimistic that he would be released. In fact, Paul describes himself in 2 Timothy as a drink offering about to be poured out, a a clear allusion to his pending death. At the time, the Neronian persecution was rising, and both Paul and Peter would be killed by Nero. Just being associated with Paul would put your own life at risk. It is in this context that Paul writes to Timothy, his spiritual son in the faith. And it's in this historical context that we read or need to read verses 9 and 10 of chapter 4. Paul writes to Timothy, Do your best to come to me quickly. For Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Here in this first verse, we have the definition of this devastating disease. The disease that I have labeled the Demas disease. The disease that has millions and millions of victims. A disease that many, including many believers, have and they don't even know it. A disease that is spreading quicker than COVID. And the definition of this disease is, wait for it, loving the world. Now, the Greek word translated world is kosmos. It occurs 186 times in the Greek New Testament. This Greek word kosmos, which is translated world, has at least three different meanings in three different contexts. So let's narrow it down. The first usage can be found in Acts 17 verse 24. 
when Paul is preaching on Mars Hill and says, the God who made the world and all things in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Cosmos, translated world, here is referring to the physical earth that was created by God. Is this the meaning of cosmos used by Paul about Demas? That Demas loved the earth too much and as a result abandoned Paul? Clearly no. Well, a second meaning of cosmos is found in a verse that's very familiar to all of us, John 3.16. For God so loved the world, cosmos, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. Cosmos, here translated world, is referring to all the people who have lived, who currently live, and who will live on planet Earth. Is this the meaning of cosmos used by Paul about Demas? That Demas loved the people who lived on planet Earth too much and as a result abandoned Paul? Clearly it is not. Well, a third meaning or third usage of cosmos is found twice in Galatians 6.14 and twice in 1 John 2.16. We'll read Galatians 6.14 first. Here the Apostle Paul writes, But may it never be that I would boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. In these instances, world is used to stand for the system of the world, a system of thinking and operating that stands in opposition to all that God stands for. It involves the world's pleasure, the world's pastime, the world's profits, the world's prestige. This is the cosmos that Demas loved, and it is the cosmos, the love of the cosmos, that led to his abandoning Paul. Demas loved the things of this world too much. We don't know how that went down, if it happened suddenly or more likely slowly and subtly. Demas got his eyes off of that which really matters and that which is eternal, and he longed for the things that this world has to offer. That is the definition of the Demas disease, a love for the world, the world being a system that stands in opposition to God. So we have defined the Demas disease, loving the world. Now let's describe it in greater depth. And to do so, we will look in 1 John 2, verses 15 and 16. Here the Apostle John uses the word cosmos four times in the same manner. In 1 John 2, 15 through 16, we read, Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life is not from, from the Father, but is from the world. This disease, loving the world, involves pursuing the world's values that stand in opposition to God. The world's values involve three areas or realms. First, the lust of the flesh. Second, the lust of the eyes. And third, the pride of life. The Greek word translated lust can be used in a positive sense of a strong desire. In 1 Thessalonians 2.17, it's used of Paul's intense desire, intense longing to see the Thessalonian believers. That was a positive longing, a God-given longing. But in 1 John, when the word lust is coupled with flesh, it is clearly negative. Or with eyes, it is clearly negative. It is a desire, in this instance, of lust of the flesh is a desire after something that does not belong to us or is not appropriate for us to have. For simplicity's sake, we could associate the phrase the lust of the flesh with the word pleasure, specifically pleasure outside of the will of God. The lust of the eyes we could associate with the word profit, it involves a strong longing for things, for money, for homes, for cars, for possessions, for our neighbor's possessions. We want more, more, more. Things, of course, are not wrong to have. Having a lot of money is not wrong. That can be used and should be used to bless others and to support God's work. 
but to set our affections and our focus of our life on these things is wrong. Then there is the pride of life. We could associate the word prestige with this category, a desire to have power, to have position or popularity. This is an ambition to be esteemed highly, to be respected and coveted by others. The Demas disease can be described as pursuing, pursuing the things of the world that stand in opposition to God, the lust of the flesh, pleasure, the lust of the eyes, possessions, and the pride of life, prestige. I'll never forget a conversation that I had once with a pastor over lunch. He was giving me an update on his life. He talked about the ministry, about his wife, and about his kids. And when he began speaking of one of his children, he began weeping. This grown man, a pastor, a father, began weeping. And he said, Paul, my son loves the world too much. He used the wording right out of 1 John 2.15. He was heartbroken because his son had the Demas disease. And there was nothing more that this father could do but pray for his son to turn back to God before this disease would wreak even more havoc on his son's life. You know, every night I pray out loud in the presence of my son and daughter that they would love the Lord with their whole heart, that they would live for the Lord with their entire being. But I know that they will have to make that choice for themselves. I imagine that some of you can relate to this pastor friend of mine. You may have children, siblings, friends, even parents who love the world. Instead of seeking God and the things of God, they're pursuing the system of the world that stands in opposition to God. What can you do? Well, we can pray. We can model loving God and the things of God and hating the world the system of the world that stands in opposition to God, and we can seek opportunities led by the Spirit of God to influence them for good. Well, in our podcast today, we have looked at the definition of the Demas disease, loving the world, and we have understood the world to be a system that stands in opposition to God. The Demas disease is the love that God hates. We've looked at the definition of the Demas disease, Pursuing after the lust of the flesh, pleasure. Pursuing after the lust of the eyes, possessions. And pursuing after the pride of life, prestige. Finally, and briefly, let's discuss the damage of the disease. Simply put, it is devastating. This disease will wreak havoc on our lives, on our friends' lives, on our families' lives, on the lives of all those who are around us. Pursuing the system of this world has drastic consequences. It takes us off our purpose in life, which is to know God and to make him known to others. This disease causes us to look at the temporal and immediate gratification and lose sight of the permanent and eternal rewards. It will cause us to spend our whole lives away with nothing to show for it. Rather than investing our lives in things that matter, the souls of men and the word of God. At the beginning of the program, I asked you if you had the Demas disease. Demas departed Paul because he loved the world. I don't believe Demas got the disease love for the world overnight. It crept in slowly and subtly. Will you join me in examining our own hearts and every day to make sure that we are not slowly and subtly drifting, beginning to love the world and the things of the world? Lord, we thank you for your inspired word, a record that is very honest. It doesn't gloss over the failures of men and women in the Bible. It is honest with the victories and failures. We thank you for recording the, this failure of Demas so that we can learn from it. Help us not to conduct or contact or contract the Demas disease. Help us, rather, to be close to you, to, to love you and love the things that are yours, and to hate the world and the system that stands in opposition to you. Help us to be cautious and careful for that subtle 
drifting that can take place in all of our lives. And it's in your son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. This brings this week's podcast to a close. Thank you for joining me for today's podcast. And if this podcast is a blessing to you, would you consider leaving us a positive review wherever it is that you download your podcasts and share it with those who are in your sphere of influence? I hope you'll join us again next week for another great podcast. But until next time, make it your ambition to learn the word.